Hello. Resuming work on the cart number two. Right now, Scott is doing something. What you doing? Making frames so that we can bend them into a shape that fits around the steel bars so that we can use these as mounting points for our bench. They'll actually go on the middle bars here and be pinched in so that they hold a piece of wood as an upright. Okay. Now I'm going to take you to the old cart to show you what he's talking about. So this piece of metal attached to this, these uh, wooden uprights. You've got them there and right here. So they wrap around the bottom of the frame and then they clamp onto these uprights. And those uprights are mounted to this bench. And that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, we've cut eight of our um, uprights. And we've got a, a piece of bench right here, <clears throat> which is a, a two by 12, about four, four feet long about the same dimensions as the cart and so I'm just uh, running nails in and so these these rails here are going to accept the attachment of these pieces here and we're going to line this all up on the, uh, we're going to figure out our width, line these up here using these metal clamps, screw into the wood here, and um, then mount our bench on top of this and nail in from the side. And then we cover the bench with carpet uh, to make it more comfortable than just bare wood. Okay, so what's happening now, we got all our brackets made, and I've made some marks, and Scott is grinding away some bits of metal so that it can fit up around this front piece. Pretty. So he's ground these pieces of metal for me and what I'm doing is I'm taking the metal and clamping in one of the uprights that we came up with. I've already marked the frame in several spots for the width of the bench that fits going to fit on top of this. And what we're doing here is taking these bits of metal and pinching them up through around the frame and then screwing in from both sides to lock this in place. It wobbles a little bit now but that's okay we need to be able to move these a little to align them then we're gonna fasten it all to the bench and we're gonna put diagonal bracing to keep it from torquing front to back. Um, once we do that it should be really tight. If it's not we can drill a hole into the frame and run just a single screw every so often to keep these from sliding uh, left and right. So first I'm drilling through and then I'm running in a screw And now I'll do that several more times for all eight of these. We've mounted all eight of the uh, pieces, so we're going to take a final measurement and make sure they're nine and a quarter inches in off of the edge here. Uh, that will give us the bench to be centered, but it will roughly look like this. And then uh, 
we're just going to go in and measure and fasten all of these. So now we're going to apply these diagonal braces to the middle sections here because they will prevent torquing front to back. We're going to have stuff at the front and the back that will prevent it from moving but here in the middle just so that when the cart starts and stops it will keep it from having the bench jostle and, and move everything around and get out of alignment. So we'll run a couple screws through on each side just to provide a little bit of extra support with these. We have our bench mounted and I've been going over a schematic I drew of the old uh, this is a relay latch that interfaces the buttons and the third sensor in order to uh, start and stop the cart um, so what I've got laid out here uh, I'm working on some relay latches I'm not gonna put it in a project box this time I'm just gonna have it uh, mounted up under here um, so if I need to service it I don't have to crack open a project box uh, I've got my stop and go buttons mounted and each of these are uh, two isolated inputs or um, pins there's a normally closed pin and a normally open pin uh, the go button uses both and the stop button is only going to use the normally closed so it opens a relay latch when I press that and then I've got my main power um, e-stop switch it uh, locks when you click it and then you spin it to unlock and that's what main power is going to run through uh, I've got my potentiometer which is uh, speed control to um, this is the JRK G2 by Pololu and this is what is going to control speed based on frequency feedback um, so I'm just sitting here wiring everything up uh, I accidentally ordered the wrong set of relays they should have been um, this is a pack of six but as you can see there's only one set of screw terminals per relay board and uh, let me show you these should have had two sets so each one looks like this and that is why I'm doubling up this is this is mimicking one of these relay uh, boards here so I'm gonna try to quickly explain explain this you've got battery power which will be interrupted by the um, that push switch and it feeds um, one half of the first relay which just allows ground to pass through over to the next relay and then power is jumped over over to the next relay now what this board does is this listens to the third sensor this is the middle optical sensor that looks for the track when it no longer sees the track it sends out a high which trips this transistor which causes this relay board to open or to change state so where it's passing ground through this normally close over to the drive board it will open up this connection essentially flipping this relay back off and I'll get to that in a second but while this sensor has a high pin meaning it doesn't see the track it prevents this relay from being re-triggered by holding open the ground so if somebody one of my actors hits dispatch on the wireless remote it won't re-dispatch because this relay can't lock um, while this relay is being tripped it also supplies power to a set of strobes uh, and that's from positive uh, through the normally open contact when this is tripped uh, current can flow and the strobe will turn on letting us know that this sensor is no longer seeing the um, track so now coming over to this side while this is operating normally 
Uh, sorry, my chicken scratch. But the go button uh, on this normally open side, there's no current flowing from. You've got positive that comes back down to this normally open connection. And then when you push the go button, it'll short through the button, come over to this common pin, <clears throat> which comes up here and gives power to this relay, turning it on. Well, now that this relay is on, if you let go of the, the go button, because power is coming through this uh, common, uh, once this relay trips, this normally open becomes closed, essentially linking this common and this connector. So that means once you release the button, power's flowing through this contact to common and then back up to positive. That's holding this relay. And at the top here, um, you've got, see this dotted line from common? Dotted line goes through the normally closed section of the go button and up to the throttle uh, pins of the uh, speed control um, and then comes back to normally closed. Now when this relay is not powered it's shorting normally closed to common and that's being wired up on this controller to uh, short across the pins of the potentiometer and it reads zero so that's telling the speed control that somebody's turned the potentiometer all the way down now the reason it runs through the switch it, when you push the go button it'll open that up allowing this throttle to uh, return to its normal speed state and that's important because if this board doesn't supply power to this this can't drive except by the physical green button on the back of the cart. Why do we do this? Um, we don't want the cart to start up without being supervised on the track. But if there's people on it and we want to move the cart, we can reach down and manually adjust the wheels to where we want to go, push and hold this, and as long as we're holding this, the cart will move. If we let go and it's not on track, it'll stop again. So it doesn't just drive on its own until it sees the track. Under normal circumstances, it's just a press and release and the cart drives. But if it's not on track, we can override it by pushing and holding this button down. And that's the only way to get the cart to move when it's not seeing the track. Um, the other part of this is I've got my red stop button and I'm going to have normally closed connection and that's going to allow power to come through the connection that I described before but if somebody hits this stop button it opens up this connection turning off this relay and this relay won't trigger again except under normal circumstances um, it's the same thing as if this relay opens and it breaks the negative leg so the stop button breaks the positive leg unlatching this relay the uh, drive relay the the safety relay if you will will break the negative leg leg opening up this relay so I'm working on wiring all that up right now and um, I'm not gonna put on the frequency feedback today but I hope to have the cart driving uh, similar to old cart version 1.0 before I had the frequency feedback. I have not been able to get the cart to driving status today. There has been a lot more wiring than I expected looking at the old schematic. Uh, I just didn't remember everything I had done. So let me show you what I have done so far. I showed you the uh, relay boards so I've got those mounted up here and they're gonna be dressed up a little bit better uh, I don't have a battery tray so I'm just balancing the battery here but I've got that wired over and down to the uh, 
wiper motor and the three sensors. And I don't know how well you can see there's a there's a third one back here as well as a two in the front. And so I'm going to power it up. I have to jump out this board. Uh, this board will be controlled by the uh, uh, e-switch, but I I don't have the 24 volts wired up to operate this board yet, so I'm just going to use a jumper wire to get it started. And what I want to show you is these have powered up and can track, whoops, to track again. And what I also want to show you, uh, when I put this in under the third sensor, here, I'll do it this way. There's a set of lights on this, this relay right here. And currently the tape is not underneath the sensor. So it trips that relay, which opens the backside relay and will set off the strobe light and prevent it from running. So now when I add that under the, uh, when I add the tape under the sensor, hopefully you can see those lights have gone off. And so now I'm gonna remove it and put it back. And so on the back side of the relays, right now the lights are off. Whoops, I just uh, I just hit the go button when I picked this up. So I'm gonna hit stop and go. And now I'm also gonna remove this white tape. So white tape is gone and I'm gonna push the green button. And you can see those lights don't come back on. So I'm gonna put the tape back underneath. And now I'm gonna hit the green button. So these lights mean that uh, it can latch and send the signal to the motor speed control so the cart should be driving right now. Uh, but like I said, I haven't got that hooked up. Um, hopefully that'll be in the next update.